Black Business School. I want to say what's up, everybody. Um, I uh, am uh, getting ready to take a trip, so I thought that I would take a few minutes to say hello and uh, to let you guys know what was on my mind and also to um, uh, answer questions. You know, I, I know sometimes people just want me to, you know, want me to answer questions. And I was doing my podcast last night with Alicia. And uh, if you um, don't know about it, uh, I do have a podcast. It's on Spotify. A lot of you have asked me to create a podcast so that uh, you guys can listen when you are driving in your car. So I, we did that. We created a podcast called Smart Black People with Dr. Boyce Watkins, and it is on Spotify. And uh, I'm going to bring Alicia in a lot. You know, she's a professor like me. So I figured that black people listen to a lot of damn rappers every day. We listen to dumbasses every day. We listen to entertainers and actors every day. So maybe we should also listen to some scholars who will keep it 100 with you. Uh, and Alicia is, uh, she's smarter than me. She's a smart one in the house. She is a full professor of social work and a therapist. And y'all know, as well as I do, give me a yes or no if you have noticed this. A lot of our people need therapy, including me. I, I'm the first one to sign up for the crazy check because I know for a fact that I too have been traumatized by slavery, racism, oppression, and everything else has happened to our people. We think slavery is a thing of the past, but it's really not a thing of the past. Slavery is a thing of the present. It's a thing of the present. Uh, just yesterday, I was talking to my, my homeboy, Jay Morrison, uh, the, start, the founder of the Tulsa Fund out of Atlanta, and I do support Jay in terms of what he's doing. We were talking about the Black Rights Party and the event he's having in Atlanta this week. Week to uh, launch the Black Rights Party. Uh, I talked to Alicia. She's crazy enough to get on an airplane with me to go down there because I am willing to face any pandemic, any situation in order to support uh, the liberation of our people. So I told Jay, I said, hey, man, look, he said, hey, Doc, I'd love to have you and uh, you and the queen down to launch the Black Rights Party. And I said, yeah, I'd love to do that. But let me just see, uh, you know, we get it because we have to get on an airplane to come to ATL. And Alicia, I asked her, she said, I'm down. She said, I am down. In fact, I asked her in the middle of the podcast. And so, uh, you know, so I tell you what, black men out here, if you're looking for love if you're looking for life if you're looking for happiness find you a down ass bad ass brilliant black woman who's ride or die with you who will fight for you give her life for you that's the type of woman you want and i got that kind of woman so i'm very very lucky and i want to express that public appreciation for a black woman and so anyway uh so those are some things that are on my mind so if you want to go find the podcast uh, we did a podcast episode last night alicia and i did uh it's called smart black people with dr boyce Watkins. it is on spotify so you could go to your spotify app and look for it make sure you hit that you know like subscribe button subscribe also to the youtube channel and also if you could share this stuff this is really important and really helpful in terms of our distribution we don't have a distribution company uh, we don't have lions gate like tyler perry has we got black people gate we got black people that love what we do that support it that are behind it that are connected to it that can appreciate it so we'd love for you to become part of our distribution network all you got to do is take the link and share it on your social media if you could do that for me just say something in the chat let me know that you could do that for us we would so appreciate it and be extremely grateful. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the world. Um, I'm going to answer some questions. Today's a Q&A type, type day. And uh, Harvey says, what gave you the idea to start your new podcast? What gave me the idea, Harvey, was the fact that I just felt like, um, I felt like black people get, you know, we're forced to listen to stupid ass people all the time. That's how we end up with a stupid ass community. You know, I, I don't understand why we listen to entertainers before we listen to our scholars. You know, even if you look at politicians and I'm, I'm talking about Trump, uh, Obama and Bush, all of Clinton, all of them, they're quicker to listen to. They're quick, like, like why did, you know, when, when, when Obama's team was supposedly trying to solve the black unemployment epidemic, why did they keep bringing Al Sharpton to the White House? That didn't make any sense. Uh, you got Dr. Claude Anderson right there in D.C. who could answer your questions in about 25 seconds. Uh, you got Julianne Malvo, who has a Ph.D. in economics from MIT. You got a black woman in the city right there in D.C. with a Ph.D. in economics from MIT, which, by the way, that's very, very hard to obtain. And you ain't called her once, but you called Al Sharpton's ass 45 times. I'm sorry, but if you asking stupid questions, you're going to get stupid answers. If you asking stupid questions to stupid people, you're going to get stupid results. So uh, that's why the unemployment problem never got solved during the Obama presidency. Now, Trump is no better. We know this, but I'm not getting caught in a Democrat Republican box. It's, it's the reality, you know. So if you bring in 
uh, smart people, you will get smart solutions. If you bring in dumbasses, you're going to get dumbass solutions. Not that Sharpton's a dumbass. Sharpton is actually one of the smartest people I've ever met. I've sat next to him for hours and I've watched him move. That is a very smart man. So I would never ever say that Sharpton is a stupid person. I would just say that he's not qualified for that job. If you need somebody to come to, your, to the White House to give a sermon, he might be your guy. If you need tips on how to maintain a healthy perm in, well into your 60s, a Sharpton might be your guy. If you want to know how to speak like a preacher and get the crowd moving he might be your guy if you want to know how to hold him another march in a rally that accomplishes absolutely nothing Sharpton might be your guy but if you're trying to solve real problems you need people that are solutions oriented and I think that's one of the problems so that's what inspired me Harvey to create a podcast is that I like solutions I like execution I like strategy I like getting shit done I don't like sitting back whining and crying and complaining and, and whimpering about what white people did that makes you a white supremacist I'm sorry if you're sitting around and you're obsessed with what white people did to you about to do to you or doing to you and what they gonna do to you that that makes you a white supremacist because you've given that man so much power over you that you will obsess your life over what he's doing instead of obsessing yourself over what you're doing the first rule in sports is that if you want to win a game you got to have offense and defense you cannot win a game just with defense defense matters defense will win you championships but offense is what's going to get you your points you cannot score typically without some offense so instead of having instead of you always reacting to what they do to you you need them reacting to what you about to do to them that's what i believe so let me keep going all right let's see next question um what app do you use to trade stock i use them all i use a lot i use e-trade uh, td ameritrade i use um robin hood stash acorns um cash app i got stocks in a, di a lot of different places i just love buying stock i, I love the power of ownership you know, as a black man, I love owning shit. I love looking at my empire growing. I love looking, going to my family and sitting at the head of that damn dinner table, holding the big knife, about to cut the family turkey after I led the family prayer and having everybody in the, the room know that, you know, that we've got a king that we can rely on who's solid as a damn rock who's leading this family. That makes me very proud. I'm very, I don't care if people think it's sexist. I don't care if people think that's toxic masculinity. Well, if that's toxic masculinity, masculinity then I am poisoned because I like being a man Be why well because for so long America has always worked to keep the black man as a little boy you know Malcolm X talked about that one of the uh, security guards of Malcolm X he was crying when he started talking about Malcolm they said well why are you crying he said because uh, around Malcolm I felt like I was somebody he said America works to keep black men as little boys and I got to be a man around Malcolm and so I like being a man uh, I, and no one should ever take that I'd rather die than lose my manhood now what's the name of the podcast it, somebody type it in it's um, Smart Black People with Dr. Boyce Watkins so if you go to Spotify and look up Smart Black People with Dr. Boyce Watkins you can find it there uh, Boyce is irritated no, I'm not irritated today I'm just yeah, I, I'm like this every day uh, let's see here um, Hit the thumbs up button, by the way. Please hit the thumbs up button. And what's up on Instagram? My Instagram is the real Boyce Watkins. My Twitter is Dr. Boyce Watkins, and then the number one. So feel free to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, let's see. Business is business, says Lola. I agree. Uh, power couple, you are both very smart. Thank you. She's the smart one. She just got promoted to full professor, which is a very big deal in academia. Very big deal. And uh, and academia is so racist. I I, I didn't want to be in you know involved in that for too long. Uh, there's a, a really smart scholar named Kyla McMullen who got a PhD in economic or sorry in computer science from from Michigan, which is a top school in computer science. So she got a PhD in computer science from Michigan, one of the top schools in the world in her field, and just got denied ten year at the University of Florida because Florida is apparently full of dumbasses and jackasses and uh, and that just reminded me that triggered me because that's what academia does it's, it's a bunch of racist ass white people they're the first ones to talk about we love diversity and we love black lives matter and blah 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 but they're also the first ones to uh, to just incorrectly judge black people and I told Kyla I said you know what I hope that they give you your tenure but honestly not getting my tenure was the best thing that ever happened to me it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Tenure is the promotion you get after you've been at a university for a while as a professor. And um, and, uh, and 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 I said, you know, not getting tenure freed me. Um, I went out and got a chance to work with my people. I got a chance to do the work that actually mattered. Um, Money-wise, 
I, I make at least 10 times more than everybody I worked with when I was at Syracuse. So the money was better to be free and to be an entrepreneur, but I'm not even, I don't care about the money. Uh, I traveled around the world. My work has had an impact. It has helped the people that actually matter. But that was my evolutionary process too. You see a lot of smart black people, we get pulled away from our community. We get pulled away instead of, you know, you know how we do the hashtag B1, which means black first. B1 means I put myself first. B1 means my community is the most important community that there is. Well, most of us don't operate on a B1 philosophy. Most of us don't put black people first. Most of us don't give our best to the black community. Most of us give our best to the white community. You know, the goal when you grow when you're growing up wasn't, you know, to stay in the hood and make the hood better. Your goal was to get out of the hood and move around white folks. And, and so I sat there and I was at Syracuse and I was teaching all these white kids. And I'm like, I'm teaching all these white Jewish and Asian kids how to go to how to go to Wall Street and make millions of dollars. I should be teaching this to black people, you know. And so um, so ultimately that was part of my process. So sometimes God gives you something. God drops a brick on your head. And, and you think it's a punishment, but really it's the greatest blessing in your life. So I just told her, I said, you know, really being denied uh, the thing that I thought I wanted actually opened me up to the thing I actually needed. You know, it's, it's just like love. Sometimes you're chasing the wrong girl. Sometimes you're in love with somebody who don't love you back and they and they a piece of shit anyway. And it takes time. You know, you got to go through a process sometimes to look back and say, damn, I'm so glad you dumped me. You know, I want to send you a thank you card because I'm so happy that you freed me so I could find what, what was truly meant for me. So just remember, every anytime you lose something that you think that you want, uh, I, I believe the universe has a way of slapping you upside the head and, and helping you mature and evolve to get in the thing that you actually need you know etc so anyway uh let's keep going all right so hit the thumbs up button please hit the thumbs up button and uh, by the way you're asking about the podcast uh, i want to make sure i mention to you guys go follow us in spotify it's called smart black people with dr boyce Watkins. alicia and i did an episode last night and we talked about how to identify financial stds and uh, that was one of the topics that came up that was one of the things i had written about in my book financial love making so uh if you want to hear more about that feel free to go check out the podcast it's smart black people with dr boyce Watkins. it's on spotify Spotify, so you can look it up on your Spotify app and listen to it while you're in your car. Uh, Alstar, I quit my job at Bass Pro Shop. Good for you. I have my 401k with the company. Should I keep my 401k or transfer it to my IRA account? Um, I would transfer it to your IRA account. You know, Don't let them hold your money. Uh, African American, do you guys know of any black app developers, real app developers? Um, I know some. I can't think of any names right now, but uh, We Buy Black, I'm sure, has some black app developers. Also, uh, all Beyonce was promoting some site called... Uh, I think all black everything, but maybe that's not right. I can't remember. But that, I mean, they seem to be pretty good. And then also, um, if you know of a black app developer, just type the name in the chat. But just remember with app development, you can actually, there are so, there's software out there now where almost anybody can have an app without it costing a whole lot of money. So apps should not be complex and very expensive. It should, you know, there's ways to do it yourself without spending a lot of money. Um, why are you calling our people black when you know the word black has no standing at law? Oh uh, man, well you you you're too deep for me today, brother. I'm 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 gonna be black, but maybe I'm supposed to be something else. Maybe I'm supposed to be fuchsia or something, or I don't know, man. I no disrespect. I just I can't get that deep with you right right now. Let me think about it. Okay. Um. Hello, sir. I've never seen you live. Says Bentley Coop. Well, what's up? Good to see you. Thank you for hanging out with us. Anthony Smith, thank you for your donation. I appreciate it. It's a good way to put yourself at the top of the line. How much of our 1.3 trillion spending power is discretionary? You know, that's a good question. I don't know exactly. I don't know. Um, and, and But the thing is, I think that the community can benefit from both, um, you know, discretionary spending and non-discretionary, right? You know, like you, you got the things you have to spend money on, but that can also be part of your buy black process too. You know, you can get the things you need from black people, not just the things you want. You know, so it's not just a matter of what you do with your extra money. It's also what you do with your primary, your main money. Same thing with time. Uh, you know, a lot of celebrities will give the black community their spare time and their spare money. But when it comes to what they do with their core money and their core time, uh, they give that to somebody else. A lot of us every day, for example, we give our core time and our core money to white people. Like that 40 hours a week that you spend working your butt off. That goes to a big company that's run by white people. Well, I'm I'm saying find a way to get your core time invested into something that you um, 
can benefit from as a black person. Uh, let's see here. Um, majority of our black GDP goes to residential housing. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So that means we need to get into real estate. We need to own buildings and property and stuff like that. And even if you can't, even if you don't feel like you can do it, at least go learn how to do it. I mean, you know, do, do you even know? Have you have you studied, um, you know, uh, FHA loans and things like that? Uh, if you haven't done that, then go look into it. Oh, wow. Twitter just suspended my account. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That wasn't true 10 minutes ago. Let me see. You know, I meant, you know why? You know what happened? I mentioned that new app called the Parlor app. And there's a new app that a lot of people are following because it gives them freedom of speech. I don't think Twitter suspended me. No, I don't think they suspended me. Follow me. Check Dr. Boyce Watkins 1. Look for, the, don't forget, it's Dr. Boyce Watkins 1. Now, if you just look for Dr. Boyce Watkins without the 1, you're not going to find anything. You're going to find some lame account that some boy somebody stole my name and they haven't posted since 2009 but if you go to dr boyce watkins in the number one you should be able to follow me on twitter i don't think i'm suspended but maybe i'm shadow banned they like to do shadow banning and stuff and i don't i don't you know i, I that that's those are the things that i think are stupid i i like freedom of speech um apparently they don't let's see here um vanessa we all think we're perfect because we don't engage with different things Huh, right, I agree. El Hajj, is there an age limit on investing? Um, I know, so, can someone invest after the age of 65 on a fixed income? Yes, because when you hit 65, your life expectancy automatically goes up just because you hit 65. Compared to your peers, uh, you and your peers now are expected to live into your 80s because you made it that far. Well, a lot of your friends, by the time you're 65, a lot of your friends didn't make it. So basically, when you have that long of a time horizon, most rules of it, long-term investing still apply. You know, um, the, the idea with long-term investing is that you're waiting for the storm to end. Most of the storms, most of the bear markets don't last more than two years. So that, so that means that even if the market plummets, when it comes back, which it always does, it never ever has ever, there's never been a time where it didn't come back. It usually comes back in less than two years. So that means that if you're 65, then okay, your, your stocks drop. You got to take a little less of your income out of your stock portfolio. You wait it out with it. By the time you're 67, things are back to normal. So um, yeah, I think investing is something older people can do to benefit themselves. But remember, it's all about your children and stuff too, man. Like the thing about wealth is that you got to take the time to really really learn how to love the people that are going to be behind you like you got to practice that like not think about yourself because a lot of people die and they're just like well i'm gonna be dead so i'm gonna care but yeah but then your your children are at the church begging you know people to set up a gofundme so they can bury your dumb ass because you didn't take the time to get an insurance policy man that's trifling don't do that like like it, it, it you know it's def definitely for the men like come on man like you're a man you're a man right you know, men don't do that. Like, and women shouldn't do it either. You know, but so, so I would just say at the end of the day, you got to think about something other than yourself. You got to think about the afterlife. The afterlife is what happens after you're gone. That's really important. Uh, Doc, are you still doing the breakdown on Malcolm X speech, the house Negro on the field Negro? Yeah, I'm gonna do that soon. I was gonna, I was gonna put it together, and then something stopped me, and I was just kind of thinking about it in terms of. <sighs> how that would fit into what we're do dealing with now. I did the ballot of the bullet because it's an election year. And then I thought about the house Negro on the field Negro. And I, and I want to do it, but I want to do it in a way that makes sense. And I want to do it for the right reason in the sense that I don't want to be, sometimes I'm just a jerk. You know, sometimes I know, sometimes I'm just such a, an annoying, provocative asshole. And I don't want to be just in the space where I'm always calling everybody a house Negro because they don't agree with me. Uh, I have to challenge myself to be more open minded sometimes. And I'm trying to do that. But sometimes you hear stuff that's just so infuriating. You want to just lash out. But uh, I want to try to get away from that, especially now that you're talking about an evolution of blackness. You're talking about a situation where because of what's happened in the last month alone, a lot of black people really want to be more black. You know, they're, they're coming into the black space. And they're not, but they're not where we are, right? They're maybe 15 years behind us. They're, they're literally thinking about things now that maybe some of us were talking about back in 2001, 2002. And so, you know, while I want to get mad when I, when I hear them say things that just don't make any sense, like, like everybody needs to go vote for the Democrats. That's what's going to do. You know, I'm like, man, I tried that. I tried that in the nineties. The shit don't work, you know, but, but I don't want to be so close minded that I can't be respectful and be a bridge builder. Um, to black people that want to do better, you know, and so, um, you know, it's like I can't build, I can't really build bridges to white people because white people are just 
they just they, they just make they just make you furious because they they just hold on to these deeply entrenched beliefs and they they're so privileged that they don't realize how condescending they can be when they try to politely correct you or or in a very um, patronizing kind of way sort of just tell you that you're wrong or you're too this you're too that I don't like any of that like I think that white supremacy is just such a insidious issue that be that even trying to build a bridge to white people is tough like i don't like i don't want to be the black guy who gets invited to all the white universities to explain racism to a bunch of white people who don't really truly want to understand it you know they i don't think they really want to do the work it's like explain it's like talking to a bunch of a bunch of sugar addicts like a really obese fat people that really want to keep eating fat food and you're trying to make them healthy like they're going to fight you every step of the way. They don't want to really be healthy because they they don't want to do the work. They know they know what it takes to lose weight. Like even when I was fat, I, I knew what it took to lose weight. I just didn't want to do it. I don't I don't want to eat health food all the time. I don't want to work out and run until I'm about to pass out. Right. So some fat people just don't want to lose weight. They just don't they don't want to do the work. They want they want you to tell them the easy way to do it. So a lot of white folks want the easy remedy for racism. They want you to just say something that's going to make them feel good. Um, and I'm the guy that's going to actually expect results. I'm going to look at where you really are and what you're really doing. And your actions will speak louder to me than your words. For example, a lot of these damn universities run around talking about we love black people now because of what happened last month. Those same universities don't even hire black professors. They don't even admit black students unless you can dribble a basketball or throw a football and you're six foot eight, 240 pounds. They don't want black men and black women there doing biology and chemistry and, and taking leadership positions in the institution because giving up power is really, really hard. It's not even natural. So I don't have enough faith in white people. I'm not enough of a white supremacist to really believe that white people can truly fix the racism that exists in their blood. I'm a person who has given up on the cure, on curing them of whatever privilege they were born with because they were poisoned by such a horribly bad educational system and uh, and just saying you know what they're gonna be who they're gonna be white folks ain't gonna stop being white they're not gonna stop competing for what they believe is theirs so i'm more in the um mode of teaching black people how to compete with that right you know so rather than taming the beast i'm the one who's saying you know let, let's let's not necessarily slay the beast right we don't have to slay the beast but at least dominate the beast Right. At least stand up to the beast. You know, when he growls at you, you growl back. You know, he's like, you like, Arr! right. You got to growl back because black people don't growl. We whimper. We fucking whimper. We 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 do. We hold marches and prayer vigils and they come in with an AK-47. They slaughter up the whole damn church and we want to go pray like, man, fuck that. No, seriously. Like, like seriously, it's, it's, it doesn't that doesn't that logic does not make sense to me. That's slave thinking. Right. You know, so. Or all these mantras like, I can't breathe. I'm not going to walk around repeating, I can't breathe. That's almost subconsciously destructive. That's like a bad, meta, bad on a metaphysical level. Like Alicia's into metaphysics. She helps me understand this. I'm not going to keep walking around saying, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe. And next thing you know, you won't be able to breathe. Like, like those are not empowering words. Words matter. What you say to yourself matters, right? When you go and you get on your knees and say, hands up, don't shoot because you want white people to feel so, what What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not saying hands up, don't shoot. I'm not saying I can't breathe. I'm not doing none of that. I'm not marching. I'm not praying. I'm fighting. I'm building. I want to go and prepare. I'm not going to go and sit here and beg you to be nice to me. That's not even in my, that doesn't gel well with my spirit on any level. So anyway, hit the thumbs up button. Let me keep going. I'm sorry. I just, y'all know how I get, that's, I can't apologize. Uh, all right. So let's see here. Do you think that we should boycott platforms like Shade Room? Um, I don't really think about Shade Room that much, but I do think Shade Room, I don't, I can't say I've seen a lot of really black empowering sort of things on Shade Room, but it seems like they have somebody there that tries. Like every now and then they'll put something up, especially if it's like a police shooting or something. So I don't really have a, a bone to pick with Shade Room. They just, they're just out there. They exist. Um, it is what it is. Uh, Orande, what do you think about all the federal judges Trump has put in place? Um, well, they've been putting white federal judges in place for a long time. Also, if he gets a second term, what does that mean for the courts? Um, it's probably going to be bad for the courts. But, you know, then Biden gets in in office and next thing you know, you're putting people in there that are going to attack you from the left. Right. Black people's problem is that you get attacked from the right and the left. Like you're like the little kid in the neighborhood where the Crips are live on one block and the Bloods live on the other. And so you're thinking, well, should I be a Crip or a Blood? 
and but then you say I'm not going to be a crip and I'm not going to be a blood and then both of them are trying to kill you so you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because remember the liberals and Joe Biden were the ones who for example among many things started pushing the Me Too movement Joe Biden was pushing the Me Too movement which is one of the things one of the reasons why you have black men like Albert Wilson getting all these years in prison for rapes they did not commit where there's no evidence right because a white woman can just say that black man touched me and next thing you know you off to jail you being taken away from your mama for life you know so basically and that goes deeper. That goes deeper than that, right? The the basically what the, the 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 agreement, the deal with the devil you're making when you align yourself with white liberals, particularly through mechanisms like Black Lives Matter, which was a, was a brilliant way to incorporate and indoctrinate black people into their movement. But uh, is is uh, it, the acronym is fail. The package that they're giving you is is what what I call the fail package. Fail. F A I L. Fail stands for um, feminism, um, abortion immigration and LGBT those are the four things those are the four uh, additional add-ons that they're gonna give you that you must follow in order to be uh, to get their support so they're, they're like okay we'll support you on the police brutality issue we'll ride or die with you on this issue which uh, even that is an issue is, is a problem because you're not really talking about black lives mattering because black people die from a lot of other things besides just police shootings right police shootings matter but there are so many other things that have to be addressed but uh but what they then do is they they say okay we got your back now Next week, I'm going to show up and I'm going to want a piece of ass, right? Like, like, like. okay, this week I bought you a steak dinner. Now, you know, you need to take me to the bedroom because we're about to do some things, right? So that's when they start sneaking up on you so they can fuck you. So basically what they're going to do is they're going to show up later and they're going to say, okay, we had your back on this. So you must have our back on these four issues, F-A-I-L. So when we come up with, when the white women show up, which they always do, whenever black people make an advance on civil rights, white women always show up, right? So white women will show up and say, we want feminism, we want Me Too, we want more rights for Karen and Becky to pretty much feel that they're superior to everyone else and to scream and holler on the internet and get men sent to jail for, you know, with no evidence. And, uh, and we need you to support that because we supported you on this. And then the second part, the A, the A is the abortion part. I'm not telling you what to believe about abor abortion. I'm just going to say, you know, that uh, there are lots of reasons to question uh, white liberal policies on abortion. Going back to Margaret Sanger, the strategy of Planned Parenthood, why the, the abortion clinics just happen to be placed in so many black neighborhoods, why they work so hard all around the world to abort black babies. That is a concern, right? That is something to at least talk about. And I think an honest conversation will get us further than simply condemning ourselves from having the ability to honestly discuss an issue. Then there becomes the immig immigration issue. Immigration is the third thing they're going to drop on you, right? The immigration will be, uh, we want open borders so anybody can come into the country. And the problem is if you go to like Southside Chicago and other places where black people used to have jobs, maybe with construction jobs and stuff like that, you'll find a lot of those jobs are not black people's jobs anymore. Also, black people, your vote is diluted by illegal by immigration. Uh, basically, uh, your vote matters less and less with every election because there's so many people coming from other countries. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be allowed. I'm just saying that you know that you have to pay attention to that. Uh, and so then the oh, and then also by the way, all those killings on the south side of Chicago were linked to one particular drug cartel, the one that was run by El Chapo. And, and the way they were getting into the country was through you know the, the open borders. They were basically just breaking into the country. And and next thing you know, they're running their drugs through Chicago, and then you got the killing fields. And, and and who's dying? It's our people that are the ones that are dying. And then everybody looks around and says, "Why are all these black people killing each other?" And black people are like, "We don't know. We don't we don't make any guns. We don't grow coca leaves. So how is this all happening in our neighborhoods?" Well, it's because people are playing you. People are using you as a pawn to pursue whatever agenda they happen to have. And then the last part, of course, is the LGBT stuff. And y'all know all about the agenda. And I'm not gonna talk much about that but it's there so I would just say to you that you have to play chess not checkers so what I believe is that we can benefit from this movement this Black Lives Matter thing I think is great ride that bus as far as you want to ride it but then at some point you have to get off the bus and say thank you I'm gonna transfer from that bus to the black bus right and I think a better black bus might be something like the black rights movement I talked to Jay Morrison about this yesterday Jay and I had a good conversation I told him he has my support and the black rights movement if you look at their their Bill of Rights and the things they believe they focus more specifically on a black first ideology so uh, he was talking about for example the uh, 13th Amendment the 13th Amendment is basically this thing that says slavery is abolished 
except for when you get when white people find a reason to lock you up. So if white people find some excuse to lock your son up, and they always will, then he can be a slave now. So slavery is not gone. Slavery is not a thing of the past. Slavery is a thing of the present. Slavery is a thing that's right now, right? So if you're talking about abolishing slavery, um, then you're talking about right now. So if, I, if I'm talking to white people, they want to do the right thing, I say, okay, first thing you got to do is you got to abolish slavery. They're going to be like, well, what are you talking about? That was a long time ago. Your ancestors were slaves. And I'd be like, no, my ancestors weren't slaves. My cousin was a slave. My uncle is a slave, right? I've been a slave, right? And then that that allows us to uh, you know, circle around an issue that's more relevant to who we are as black people and allows us to take the momentum that we've established from the, pre, from the movements that have occurred in the last month or so and actually build on that into something that really digs to the heart of the things that's been harming us the most. What's the biggest thing that's been kicking our ass as black people for the last 30 years? Broken fucking families broken families families with no daddy and now the mommies and the children think daddies are not necessary right and the next thing you know little kids are getting molested all kinds of chaos is breaking out in your communities and your hoods little, little young teenagers are shooting each other up right that all that is natural a natural occurrence of not having the male mentor in the house did you know that they had um a group of elephants that they put in a wildlife reserve and they moved these elephants to the reserve to protect them because the poachers were coming and hunting uh the the elephants and then mostly the the hunters that would go after the big alpha male elephants the fathers because the fathers had the big tusks and they could, could they could kill them take their tusks sell their tusks in china and make a ton of money right well so there are a lot of these young elephants elephants if you know anything about them they're very intelligent and they're very emotional and they're mammals just like you well so these young elephants uh were were traumatized because they had to watch their fathers die and so they would take the mother and take the son or the or whatever and the sons and daughters and put them on this reserve well what they found was that when the elephants were on the reserve they were doing things that were very unnatural the adolescent elephants basically the teenagers were running around and killing the other animals they like they put these animals in this natural habitat where they weren't supposed to harm each other and they said for some reason these elephants are forming gangs gang of getting gang affiliated elephants i swear to god and they're they're, they're these gangs are roaming the roaming around the reserve and they're like killing the rhinos and stuff and they didn't understand it and what they did found out when they went and did their research was that the reason that the teenage elephants were going around killing people and killing each other and doing all kinds of gangster shit is because they did not have fathers they said oh my god the fathers the alpha males of the communities the commandos of the community or the ones who normally kept the young bucks in check so basically in your communities you have teenagers running wild because there's a point where a boy turns about 13 where his mama can't really control him like that anymore his he realizes wait a minute my voice is deep i got hair on my balls i'm a man i'm to, I'm a foot taller than you, so you can yang, 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 yang in my ear, and I'm going to always love you, but as soon as you get done yapping and nagging me half to death, I'm going to walk out the door, and I'm going to get with my boys, and we're going to do what we're going to do, right? So it's the fathers that matter in all of this, and, and, and even the substitute father is only a substitute father. You know, uh, a, a, the biological father has the natural ability to control his male son, and the mother does not have that same power, and so the same way the mother can do things that fathers can't do there are things that fathers can do that mothers can't do so the removal of our fathers has removed our protectors it's removed a lot of our providers that's why our families are struggling economically it's removed a lot of the leaders natural leaders in the community and so your community's screwed because of this so going back to the 13th amendment and abolishing slavery in a true and authentic way is a great first step to the restoration of our families so uh anyway let me um hit the thumbs up button by the way if you haven't hit the thumbs up button please Please hit the thumbs up button and also uh, my instagram is the real boys walking some of you are watching on instagram and uh, also don't forget we have the new podcast now if you want to listen to it in your car on audio it's on spotify it's called smart black people with dr boyce watkins so if you go to spotify and look up smart black people with dr boyce watkins you'll find the podcast uh, mr brown says thank you for your donation he says are you familiar about qualified immunity and jury reform guilty or not, they need to give a reason for the verdict. These these are things I'm pushing. Qualified immunity. I don't know anything about qualified immunity. It's really interesting, Mr. Brown. Feel free to email um, information to me. My email is voice at voicewalkins.com. Uh, and feel free to send it over. I don't know anything about that. I do know about jury reform. Uh, we actually fought on jury reform um, to some extent. It, our, it was 
it was a it was a it was a fight. We did what we could. Um, Judge Olu Stevens in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville's a city that's blowing up right now with the Breonna Taylor killing and everything else. That's where I'm from. Um, judge Olu Stevens actually was a black judge who removed a jury because they had all white defendants that were excuse me all white juries sentencing uh, black defendants, and he actually took a stand on that issue. And I thought that was really. Um, uh, bold of him to do and they gave him a lot of shit of course and even the democrats in the city gave him a lot of shit some of the black uh lawyers and, and judges gave him shit which kind of bothered me a little bit and uh and we just stood up for him we had we held a, a march and well i know i said march i don't do marches but we did we did we did do something right so god i know but i i did what i could we did what we could some just, i was invited down and we we stood up for him as much as we could, and I did what I could to help, and uh, and and it was one of those things that um, hopefully helped to highlight an issue and make a difference. So um, so yeah. So anyway, I, I, let me go back because I, I don't I don't I'm not into marching, I, but I did do it for that brother because I respect him a lot. But I don't really do that very often. All right, so let me see here. Um, why no talk of mining stocks or physical metals? Um, I own gold. And so um, that's the main metal I buy. The Riddler says, uh, what are your opinions on the Marxist ideology and its negative effect on black Americans? Well, the Marxist ideology, very left, you know, communist, socialist space. Um, I had my experience with that when um, some white people called me. White people don't call me very much. But one time a white guy called me and he said, uh, Dr. Cornell West recommended that we reach out to you. Um, and I said, yeah, I love Cornell West. What do you need? And he said, um, we are holding uh, a protest uh, for Michael Brown, and we want to uh, rally and you know for for Michael and all that stuff. And I said, okay, yeah, I agree with that issue. And so I, I participated and supported what they were doing. But then uh, what happened was um, I didn't realize that uh, how the game works. You know, I didn't realize that that they're reaching out to me to participate in the Michael Brown rally was ultimately going to turn into. Um, sort of a mass scale recruitment into what I th think was the Communist Party. Um, I, I went to a couple of meetings and I noticed that uh, now the South Side of Chicago it, around the Hyde Park area around the University of Chicago is known as kind of a haven for socialist communist ideology. Not that it's bad or evil. It just is what it is. Marxism, all that stuff. And, um, and I'm not into that. I'm not into that because I don't think black people need that. I think black people need something a little different. I, I'm more of a nationalist. I'm more of a Malcolm X-ish, Marcus Garvey-ish kind of guy. So I was there and I noticed everybody was calling each other comrade and stuff like that. And, um, and also, uh, then what, what really, um, the kicker was when the guy called me and asked me to give a whole bunch of money and he was really pressuring me and trying to force me to do. And the, the easiest way to get me to not do something is when you try to pressure me to do it. So I basically just told him, like, don't call me anymore. And, uh, and that was when I started really thinking about the game, the long-term game. And I started thinking about history and I started thinking about the fact that if you go back to when the civil rights movement started and, and you look at the, the black Panthers, as much as you love the black Panthers, there was a lot of socialist communist energy behind those movements, right? And those movements are not bad. Like, I'm not saying that, that those are bad ideas. There are a lot of good ideas in Marxism and communism and socialism. But I don't think that's the right remedy for black people because black people need power and wealth. And I think black people need um, uh, a type of sovereignty and security that doesn't necessarily come from aligning yourself with um, the, the battles between the left and the right that white folks have been having for the last two 200 years. Um, I, I personally think that uh, that the black first ideology is one where we say, look, we've got room for free enterprise. We, we don't hate wealthy people. We don't hate business owners. We want business owners to prosper because we want to build our own economy. We want to control the economics that exists in our community. We want to control the politics that exists in our community. We want to control the educational systems that exist in our community. At the same time, uh, we may actually, you know, pursue some ideas that are a little bit on the left. You know, I, like I think that most black people believe uh, in, in the equality of women. I, I don't know a lot of black households where women are just subjugated into some secondary, second race status. In a lot of households, the women are the bosses, you know, and I think a lot of us are okay with that. You know, sometimes Alicia is the boss in our house. You know, um, I, I don't think black people hate gay people. I don't. I, th I think that black people just feel that, you know, not most black people I know just feel like what you do in your bedroom is your business. I don't need to know it. I don't need you to ask me to applaud it. I don't need you putting it in my face. I don't need you reminding me of whose penis you had in your mouth yesterday. I don't really want to know that. I don't care about that, male or female. And, and, and so I think that in general, 
we're, we're just not really in that leftist category. We're probably more a little bit on the conservative side, but we're not Republicans because unfortunately the Republican conservatives have that history of racism. If they ever find a way to really eradicate that, they're going to recruit a lot of black people because what you're seeing is you're seeing a lot of um, really strong black people going you know to the right like and, and being vocal about it uh candace owens doesn't count because she's kind of a, a trump baby that's what she is she's the the, the newer younger amorosa in about five years she's going to get pissed off at trump she's going to write some tell-all book because he's going to maybe you know he's going to you know kick her to the curb or whatever but um but i did see a sister that was on um on the breakfast club and uh shout out to charlamagne for even taking the time to interview her because I believe black people should hear all the perspectives. I don't believe anybody should ever, anybody who ever filters information from you is not your friend. Anybody who ever just doesn't want you to hear the other point of view is not your friend. And liberals will go out of their way to make sure black people don't hear another perspective because they'll say, well, we don't want black people to be misled by these other points of view. Well, that's patronizing. That means they think of you as children. That, that's pimping. That's how that's how a pimp does a whole. A pimp's like, don't be talking about, talking about, talking about that college education around my bitches, right? Well, why not let uh, why not let people make their own decision? They don't want black people making their own decisions. So they had this lady on. I forgot her name. She's running for office somewhere. I forgot. Maybe this is bad for her because I'm not I can't even promote her because I don't remember her name. But I watched the interview and I said, OK, she's really actually saying things that I hear a lot of black people say. And I, I like what she was doing because she's giving black people room to kind of participate in the debate in an honest, authentic way. And so um, I think that the next step is that formation of the political party. Jay's doing the Black Rights Party down in Atlanta. I am supporting that because I think that this is black history, man. This is black history because we're doing things economically we've never done before or not done in a while, not done, you know, at least since Reconstruction. We're doing things politically we haven't done before, you know, or at least not in a while, you know, um, not to discredit what the ancestors have done because they've done so many great things so i can't even pretend like we're just so much better we're not we're not but i do believe that we're making our mark in history i believe that what we're doing today is going to really last for hundreds of years and i think we should be very proud of ourselves for what we've accomplished in the last decade so uh, i just want to say keep on keeping on i gotta go me and alicia are about to drive we're about to go down south for a little bit and um and uh um that's it so i'm out uh don't forget subscribe to the podcast uh if you want to listen to you know our stuff uh, through you know, audio as opposed to just video. You can go to Spotify and uh, look up uh, Smart Black People with Dr. Boyce Watkins. That's the podcast. If you haven't learned to buy your first share of stock or if you've already started investing and you just want to get free stuff from us, free information, go to firstshareofstock.com. That's four words, firstshareofstock.com. There's a free training on how to get started, also how to use uh, TD Ameritrade, and also you get a lot of free stuff in your email. I'll be in your inbox on a regular basis with all kinds of information that will make your life better. Uh, so I just want you to win. I want you to make the best decision for your family. I want you to make money. I want you to be wealthy. I want you to be prosperous. I wish you nothing but happiness for all eternity. And God bless all of you, and thank you for listening. So I'll see you guys soon. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Peace.